Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. God has given us such a beautiful day. Amen. Amen. Come on, just stand to your feet and just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you for being so good to us, Lord God. Amen. Brought us over the years, brought us through COVID, brought us through a lot of different things in our lives. You know, we always think back to some of those songs Mama and them used to sing, right? Hallelujah. Even as, as dark as the days may get, she might tell you, you fight on. You keep on fighting. You keep that sword in your hand and you fight on. All right. So once you can encourage somebody, it might be dark, but you fight on. Come on, why don't you say it again? You fight on. With your sword in your hand, you fight on. Right, come on now, you got to put your hands together on this one. We're going to praise them like mama now. Hallelujah. Like mama now. Like mama now. Come on. Keep your sword in your hand. 
fight of faith. Amen. Bless the Lord. Let us pray, saints. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity and the privilege to be in your house today, Lord God. Lord, some of us may have had to fight just to be here today, and God, we are not going to hold back on you, Lord, because you never held back from us, Lord God. You never held back, but Lord, you give your best for us, Lord God. So the least we can do is open up our mouths and give you praise today, Lord God, to give you thanks today, Lord, to give you adoration and reverence in your house, Lord God. We made it here, Lord, and it's only by your grace and your mercy, Lord, that we come here to worship you, Lord, and bless your holy name, to lift up the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you, Lord, that we can continue to fight this good fight of faith and realize the battle's not ours anyway. Hallelujah. The battle is yours and you've already won. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, and we take authority, Lord God, at this time, Lord, in the spirit, Lord God, that any spirit, oh God, contrary to your word, your will, or your way, Lord God, from being done in this house, we give marching orders to move, to leave in the name of Jesus, that your will be done in this house, that your will be done in the lives of your people, oh God. Hallelujah. Lift off the burdens today, Lord God. Take away the cares, oh God. Take them upon yourself. You bore them upon the cross, oh God. Hallelujah. Help your people today, Lord, to leave their burdens here. Hallelujah, Lord God, at the feet of Jesus, Lord, for as we know that he cares and he can handle them. Bless your word today, God. Hallelujah. We heard the sword of the Spirit, Lord. We need that word today, Lord, to give us that sword to go forth through this week and fight this fight of faith, Lord God, knowing that we'll prevail, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless your man of God as he brings forth your word, Lord. Everything that he has prepared in his heart, Lord, that you have placed in his heart, all this pour our revelation knowledge upon them now in the name of Jesus and let your word find its rightful place in the hearts of your people. We lift this service up to you and say, have your way in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.
Everybody been changed. Totally free from sin. Every shackle. Every shackle. Bro. And now I've got new life. Now I can live. Yeah. Again. I have been touched. I have been touched. Changed. Here. Totally. Totally free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can be 
praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to read eight verses. Eight verses from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting at verse 33. 1 Samuel 17, 33 through 40. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, and thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered him out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both a lion and a bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine or Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor and put an helmet of brass upon his head, and he armed him with a coat of mail or armor. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. So he said, I'm not going to go forth with this because I have not proved this. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five, food, five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had. Even a scrip and his sling was in his hand, and he threw near the Philistine. God bless you and keep you as our prayer. You may be seated. Now, if that was for me, that would have been all right. But I say give God a praise. Amen. That's, that's a little better. That's a little better. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We honor the Lord for being here this morning. Amen. If it wasn't for the grace of God. Amen. We wouldn't be standing here today. Amen. I honor the shepherd of this house, Pastor Jones, a man who I love, respect. Amen. Come on, give God a praise for the pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. When he asked me to uh, share with you this morning, I was more than happy to do so. And sometimes you can kind of sense when something is coming your way. And I did this last week, and I said, he going to ask me. And I was, I was prepared. Amen. I honor God. Amen. One of the things he did ask me whenever you read it. I say whenever you read it. Amen. Because I've been preparing myself and keeping myself before the Lord. Amen. Despite of what I may be going through. Amen. I'm going to still put on a suit and a tie. Still go to work. They'll do what is necessary. Amen. Pastor Thomas read the scriptures this morning, and I just want to talk about David and him going up against this giant. How many ever went up against a giant? A giant problem. A situation that you saw no end to. Amen. For a thought today, knowing and acting upon what is known. Or let's shorten it up and say growing faith. 
Amen? Just bow your heads with me for a moment. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk, to proclaim your truths to these, your people. I pray that you would touch me, your servant, that I share what you've given unto me. Bless us now that we not only be hearers, but doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I often think about whenever we get an opportunity to come into the house of God, it is a chance, an opportunity for God to speak to us and to say something to us regarding our present position in life. Amen? And we ought to be thankful that he has carved out this moment in time to help you in your walk with him. In the scriptures we read where Samuel and David, David is, is, is a boy, he's a shepherd. And he is tending his father, how he has tended his father's sheep. But he was the youngest of the boys. He was a young man, but yet David had a relationship with God. That's the difference between he and his brothers. David had a relationship with God. Faith sees the invisible, believes the unbelievable, and receives the impossible. Let's look at David's encounter with Goliath. Everyone was afraid of this giant, except David. He was just a boy, but his youth had nothing to do with the magnitude of his faith. He was small, but his faith was big. Others saw Goliath as an insurmountable problem. Have you ever looked at your situation and say, this is a big problem? How in the world am I going to get over this problem? Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 says, Cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward. In other words, people of God stay in faith. Amen. I heard a preacher say this some time ago. He said, stay in faith and walk in love. And see, if you can do those two things, amen, life will be much easier for you. Frustrations won't have, amen, its way with you if you stay in faith and walk in love. The Amplified says, do not therefore fling away your fearlessness, confidence, for it has glorious and great reward. Amen. When you know something, here it is, David knew Amen. Something about God. He knew that God would help him through this situation. He testified about a victory that he had not long ago. I believe that we need to find some victories in our lives and point to those things. And say, well, God, you got me through this. And I know you're going to get me through that. Amen. So I believe we need to have something that we can point to to say that I have the victory. Amen. I often say that sometimes people uh, respond or react a certain way because especially if you've offended them. And what they would do to justify their, their actions towards you, they point to something you did. And they use that as a crutch to justify a behavior. I'm sure y'all know some folks just like that. Say, I got one in my house. I got one on my job. And so what happens is when all of this goes on, amen, you trying to figure out what is going on with you. I know that's what I do. Here things about David and Saul. David was young and Saul reminded him of his youth. Here is what the enemy will do to you. He'll remind you of your past. He'll remind you of what you used to do. But you got to remind him of who you are. You got to remind him of where you came from and where I am today. 
That's why I say knowing and acting upon what is known. This faith that we talk about has to be a growing faith. It cannot be this baby step faith. Amen. Many times we want to wonder why we don't get the strength that we need because we're not willing to go through nothing. Amen. We cannot judge each other or compare ourselves with each other. What took faith for Pastor Jones, I may not need that kind of faith. I might need another kind of faith. Every level to go up on is a new level of enemy. The devil is coming at you. He ought to be afraid when you wake up in the morning and say, Lord, she's getting up today. And when you get up, you get up and you give God a praise and a thanks. Despite of what you're going through. Amen. David was reminded of his youth. Amen. David reminded Saul of some facts about the lion in the bear. Here is what you've got to do to the enemy. you got to remind him of that victory that happened a year ago. Amen. Remind him of that family situation that you thought was never going to get better, but it did get better. Amen. So he pointed and he testified about something that he did. That here it is when I, I'm getting ready to go up against this giant, but I want to let you know a little facts about my activities. When the lion came and took one of the, one of the sheep, I went and got him. So in other words, you can't just wait for the fight to come to you. You got to take the fight to the fight. Amen. So David went and slew the lion. The bear came and he did the same thing. But David testified to Saul that I did all of this. And this uncircumcised Philistine defies the army of the Lord. And y'all scared of him? David decided, Saul said, well, you know, I need to fix you up, David. I need to put you on some armor. I need to arm you for this battle. And David said, all right. I'm paraphrasing. He puts on this armor, puts on the helmet, puts on the mane. He puts on everything that Saul gives him. And David is now standing and saying, now, I, ain't, I don't know how this stuff works. This stuff is, is too heavy because he's little now. So David had to realize what I'm, what I'm accustomed to. Here's where this knowledge comes in. You got to know your limitations. Amen. Just because you serve God don't mean you can do everything. Hello. Understand there are some limits to you. Years ago, I was working at this particular place and there was a, a, uh, a dock. And I used to run and jump up on the dock. I mean, get a just good old flight. Now, I'm married already. So I'm thinking, okay. So this one particular time, I go and I'm running, but I'm thinking about the consequences that if I fall, it ain't going to be good. So I'm realizing that there is a limit to what I can do. I can't jump like I used to. And so I go up there and get ready to do this, and then I think about it. So one of the men that was working, I said, man, give me a hand up. <laughs> I realized I couldn't do what I used to do. And I wasn't trying to impress nobody. Hello. David was unfamiliar with Saul's armor because he had not proved. David removed the armor because it did not fit. There are some things, some people in your life that just don't fit. They used to fit. They used to fit like a glove. But the relationship has changed. I was talking to my daughter the other day. I said, you know, I'm thankful. She's 37. 
And uh, I say, you know, that we have a relationship and we're, we're good. I say, but you don't need me like you used to need me. Amen? There is a shift, a dynamic in the relationship. It's changed. You got a husband now. You can be in his pocket. Not my pocket. I can suggest things to you. I can't tell you what to do. So the dynamic of the relationship has changed, but it's still a relationship. And see, here's the thing about you and God. You might have been walking with God for years, and you might have gone through some things. You might have experienced some things, and all that does is just build the relationship. Now you can go to God. Amen. You don't have to beg God. You know, if your children come up to you and you got a grocery full, the, 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 the refrigerator is full, they should not have to come and beg you, Mama, can I have something that's in the refrigerator? Reason being is that there is a relationship that you have with that child that they should be able to ask you for anything. Let's turn this thing over to God. We don't have to beg God for anything. The Bible said if we ask, It said that we knock and we seek. All of these things God will open. These are just levels of prayer. Asking, knocking, and seeking. There are levels to this thing just like it took levels for me to climb these stairs. Now, I can't get up here. I might can jump on the second step. I will not try to jump on the third step. When you walk with God, you don't have to rush this thing. Because the Bible says that he's with you. Say that the spirit of God walks alongside you. It's that paracletos. He aids you. He he helps you. There are times in my prayer, if I'm going up against something that's challenging, I say, God, I need you to go before me. I need you to set the atmosphere because I'm going into a hostile environment. Customer is mad because the, the furniture ain't working. And when I get in there, by the time I leave, they're giving me a tip. I ain't talking about just a word tip. I'm talking about some cash. Say, here, Lewis, lunch is on me. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. And that might have been one of the days that I didn't have anything. But God always will provide. Our relationship Oh, let, let's, let me slow down. David's weapon of choice was five smooth stones and a slingshot and a knowledge that God was with him. When you're going into a battle, take the Lord with you. Amen? If it's a health challenge, many times the truth of our health is presented to us and what are you going to do with that truth? Are you going to deny it and say, no, this is of the devil? It may be, but there's some things that you might have to do. You might have to quit drinking all them Pepsis and Cokes and quit eating all that fried chicken. Hello, somebody. Sometimes you might just need to eat you a bowl of cereal and call it a night. Hello, or fast if you need to, but my God, get some control. Learn to pull yourself away. There has to be some, 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 some kind of stability in your life that you just don't let a piece of meat cause you all this headache. Hmm. 
Hmm. Knowing and acting upon what is known is what David was doing. Our relationship with the Lord must be more than just coming to church and doing all these things that identify us as believers. Hello, somebody. Believers within the church of our faith walk must be exercised. The application of his word is to be manifested. It just ain't enough to just read scripture. We shouldn't just look at scripture as mere suggestions. It is the word of God. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every proceeding word. That means God has proceeded the word over your life. And what he wants you to do is start walking the word. You know how you go to a movie and they'll show you the ending and then they'll start backing up. And you're trying to figure out, well, how did he get in this scene? That's what God is. He sees your life to its completion. And so what we've got to do, the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And so you got to question yourself sometime that is this something that God has ordered? Especially if you're having difficulty. And not saying difficulty is, is always a known thing that it's not God. But there are some times when some stuff just, just don't work out. And you got to back up and revisit this thing. Saul was in jail. The 16th chapter of Acts. They were chained together. The jailer was afraid when the shackles came loose. Saul said, don't worry. We're still here. My point is this. Even though it may be some hard circumstances, you may be in a tough place, but it does not mean that's not the will of God at that moment. Hello? Sometimes we would say that this is not the will of God because he wouldn't let me go through this. Some stuff you got to go through. We talking about growing faith. That your faith grow. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is how our faith grows. Not just listening to it and just not putting it, but walk it out. Amen? How much more time I got, Pastor? I think I'm doing pretty good. The pastor asked a question. I may not give it just like he said it because he's so eloquent with some stuff he says. You know, I just, okay, I ain't finna say all that. <laughs> he said, will the evidence presented about you prove your guilt of being a Christian? Boy, he said, that's it. Oh, my God. That's something for us to think about. Have y'all given that some thought? If you were put on trial right now and the evidence be overwhelming that you are a Christian and say you're sentenced to serve God for the rest of your life, or would it be that there are some things that are suspect That I just don't really, I, I can't put my finger on it. Peter tried that whole thing. Tried to hide himself. Tried to join himself with a group of folks. The Bible said that his speech betrayed him. Does your speech betray you? When you're at the job, do you find yourself in conversations that are not what you need to be in. They said something to Peter. Say, you even look like this man called Jesus. You talk, you some stuff coming out of you that should be coming out of you. But his speech gave him away. 
Does your speech give you away? Do you say something that might be off color and quickly say, Lord, forgive me? Amen? None of us are perfect. But we sure need to strive to be just that. Even so, faith, if it has works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man say, thou hast, and I works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Amen? There are some things that you have got to do to. Amen? Amen? John chapter 9, the man that was blind from his birth, his disciples looked at him and said, Lord, who did sin? Isn't that how we do? When we see a visible situation, somebody sin. That's why you're in the situation you're in, because you're sin. But here it is, Jesus said, neither he nor his parents sin. This is done. God allowed this to happen. That the glory of God might be revealed in this boy. Jesus spit on the ground. Made clay. Put it on his. That was customary back then. You ain't going to do that today. Told the boy what to do. My point is. You have got to participate in your deliverance. Hello? You got to participate in you getting a new job. You just can't lay in the bed at 9 o'clock and think, well, the job going to come at me. This boy was told to go do something. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. He didn't question the fact because he's blind. He want to see. You ain't worrying about his credentials. So he goes and the Bible says that he receives sight. He comes back into the same crowd and they are questioning, is this the boy or the beggar? Some say, no, that's somebody new. That's different. So he had to testify for himself. You just can't wait for other folks to talk about what God done for you. They say, well, how did you receive your sight? He said, well, look, I don't know what kind of man he was. I perceive him to be a prophet, but I know I was blind. But now I see. Hello? He testified for himself. Because they asked him. But he said, you know what? I don't know what, what kind of job he had. All I know is he told me to go and wash. And I got my sight. So you can talk about all that you want, but I'm seeing now. Amen? He was a participant in his deliverance. Amen? It can't just be God only. He wants you to do something. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. Unto who? A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly divide. So you can rightly divide the word on somebody else, but you can't rightly divide it on yourself. Something wrong with that problem. Amen? Amen? You need to be able to rightly divide the word concerning your present place in life, your situation. Amen? New levels, new devils. Hello? As you grow up in God, just know that there's going to be another one walking right alongside you trying to pull you back down. You know Three steps forward, two steps backwards. I mean, I felt like life just keep throwing stuff at you. It's like, Lord, I need a break. What it is, you need to take a step back. 
and assess the situation. You know how it is, Pastor, when you, they tell you to measure twice, cut once. Sometimes we want to cut once and don't measure at all. I done done that. Sometimes you put stuff together, you, you ain't reading none of the instructions. They put them in the box for a reason. <laughs> it is a reason that the, the tire goes on the front and not on the top where the handlebars bars are. But many of you, you'll look at the box and say, I can do this. Put the thing together and ain't got no training wheels, ain't got nothing. You just got a whole lot of bolts and nuts left over. And you're trying to say, well, what the devil done happened here? Because you did not read the instructions. Hello. The instructions are here. Amen. They have not taken the Bible from you. You can read it. And you can't just wait to come to church to hear the preacher. Because the stuff you're dealing with, the preacher probably ain't going to be able to deal with it. Because you ain't even more than to deal with it. We want the preacher to do everything. Lord, the man got to sleep. He already praying for you. Amen. He already missing time with his wife. I'm going to close with this. I had a, a young lady, pastor. Uh, father was a pastor. And every Sunday, she would have to wait in order for them to go home and go eat or whatever because somebody needed to talk to him. And this, this particular person was coming every Sunday. The same problem. And so what this young lady did, and sometimes PKs, preacher's kids, feel this way. That I hate the church. Because the church take my daddy. Or the church take my mama. For a long time, she was bitter about that situation. But what it takes is for the pastor, if he could have just not sis, we talked about this last week. We still talking about it? Obviously, you don't want to get better. Amen? Sometimes you just got to be frank and say, when I'll give you some scriptures, I need you to, just like the doctor, I'm going to give you two pills and come back here next week. I'm going to give you a 30-day supply. And when you're over with this here, we're going to see where your health is. We're going to see what your spiritual condition is. Because that's what it is. Amen. But she was bitter. And it really made her feel alone. I don't know if you're here today and you feel like just things are just, just not working out. I'm just going through stuff. and I don't know why I'm going through it. Could it be that God may be trying to use that situation to bring some patience in your life? To bring some joy that once was there but no longer is? To bring some peace to your situation? Could it be that God... See, many times we just want to look at something one way. But if we look up to the hills... From which cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. He that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. He is concerned. And one more thing, let me drop this on you. God is never disappointed in you. Now you were saying, now wait a minute. We as parents, we get disappointed when our children do things because... That's not what we taught them to do. But God knows all things. He knew that you were going to do this. That's why the Bible says that he's ready to forgive you. You acknowledge it. Say, Lord, I've done wrong. And move on. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
Amen. So you've got to understand and settle that in your mind. God does not dislike me. God is not disappointed in me. You may be disappointed in yourself because you keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. No, sir. Until you start doing some right things, that's when things will start turning around. Amen. Knowing and acting upon what is known. Whatever situation you go through, know that God is with you. Know that he's always there. I'm sure you know that I hadn't talked about my situation because it's already worked out. Hello. My home situation is getting better. There's, there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. It, it, it literally takes me away. And I find myself in the peace of God. Is it challenging? Oh, yes. But the peace of God. The Bible says, let the peace of God rule. That's why there's referees to keep the game in order. That's why he's there to say out of bounds, foul, and so on and so on. The referee in your life is the peace of God. He's there to give you the peace you need for the situation that you're in. Amen? And don't ever look at your situation like, oh, woe is me. That's one thing I chose not to do. Mm -mm. I was talking to my wife last night. I said, you know, we're thankful that you haven't gotten a diagnosis of terminal illness. Amen? Yes. We don't, we don't have a diagnosis. To God be the glory. All right, it's 9.55. It's time to go. Let's all stay. Amen. I hope I've said something that would encourage you today. Amen. As our deacons, counselors come at this time, we would invite you that have not made a decision to follow the Lord. This is your opportunity now. This is that moment I spoke about earlier. That moment in time that's etched out just for you if you're here today would you come amen thank you so much for you who are watching us via the internet we give God praise for you amen if you are listening and you want to make a commitment to the Lord we ask these first to come amen if not we'll pray a prayer of salvation that the Lord would heal and set free. Father, I come to you now, a sinner, asking for your forgiveness, asking for you to forgive me of all my sins, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I accept you, I accept what you did on the cross some 2,000 years ago. I receive you into my life. This is the moment. This is my new birthday that I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Morning, Antioch. Once again, it's your boy, Pastor Wolf, and I just want to give you a quick update. We are excited. We are coming up on the graduation time for everyone that 
reached out to me or sent me an email and spent time with me on the phone. Thank you so much. We got all the information and numbers we needed for the youth reentry. From here, just stay tuned for further announcements. Now, as far as the graduation is concerned, I want to remind you of three important deadlines. May 22nd, if there's any seniors attached to Antioch that are graduated, anybody that's graduated from college, anyone that has special accomplishments, I need it all by May 22nd. If you're given to adopt a senior, we need to collect all monies by May 27th. Everything is going on schedule as the previous couple of years. The only thing that's uh, different this year so far is the amount of money we've collected for Adopt a Senior at this point. So I'm just encouraging you all, we want to be a blessing to our young people. If you can, please, I trust you. I know you'll show up and show out. Please give, just put Adopt a Senior in your giving and let's be a blessing to all our young people. Uh, finally, June 3rd, for those that are graduating from high school, your PBB Willie Moore scholarship applications need to be received so the judges can review them and be ready for June 5th. Once again, graduation is right after service on June 5th here in the sanctuary. I look forward to seeing you there. God bless. Good morning. What an awesome and powerful word. There is a class for you. Adult Sunday School class is held on Sundays at 11 a.m. via Zoom. Beginners through high school Sunday School classes are held on Sundays at 12 p.m. via Zoom as well. Head to our church website for the link to join. Don't forget to join us this Wednesday for Bible study via Zoom at 7 p.m. We also have youth Bible study via Instagram starting at 7 p.m. as well. Head to our website for the links to join in. Antioch family, thank you for your continued generosity through your tithes and offerings. It is greatly appreciated. There are a couple ways you can give. You can give online at antioch-mbc.org or you can mail it to 311 East Broadway Street, Oviedo, Florida 32765. We want to say happy birthday to everyone who celebrated a birthday and happy anniversary to every couple celebrating an anniversary this past week. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel at ANBC Oviedo. Remember to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay prayed up. Have a blessed week.